What if I told you there was a method of detecting right clicks that was easier to set up than the carrot on a stick? Hey, if you clicked on this video, I am going to assume that you're interested in learning how to detect when someone presses the right mouse button in the video game Minecraft, using only the commands provided in-game. Now, Mojang has made this really hard because for some reason they just they don't want data pack creators to have access to core functions of the game, like clicking or pressing buttons. That would be too much power. So all the ways to detect right-click are a little bit jank and have their own pros and cons. So in this video, I'm going to go over all the ones that I'm aware of and tell you when you should use them and what they're good for and what they're not good for. So to start off, we're going to be going with the classic right-click detection method of going into your controls, setting the ninth hotbar slot to right-click, and then when a player right-clicks, you just detect when their slot is on number nine and, um, okay, on to the real stuff. Let's start with the method all the cool kids are raging about, carrot on a stick. Now, why should you use a carrot on a stick to detect right clicks? Well, it's got its own spot in the statistics page. You can see I've used the carrot on a stick 1,526 times, which means we can detect that number with commands and whenever it goes up, we do something. This is as simple as adding a scoreboard with slash scoreboard, objectives add, call it like carrot, and then setting it to minecraft.used colon minecraft.carrot on a stick. Then if we set that to display on the sidebar with scoreboard, objectives, set display, sidebar, carrot, and we right click with the carrot on a stick, you can see we have a score of one. Every time we right click, that's gonna go up one more. But before I go and show you how to do that in a data pack, let's just, uh, let's just consider for a moment the oft forgotten warped fungus on a stick. A carrot on a stick is great. It's a good way to detect things, but it has one fatal flaw which is that pigs will be attracted to you when you're holding it. So if you're planning on retexturing this to an awesome sniper rifle, and every time you hold it out around pigs, they just follow you around, uh, that's, that's not going to be so good. No, 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 no. Many people opt to use the warped fungus on a stick, which leaves pigs completely neutral. However, good old striders will still be attracted to you. How often do you see striders versus how often do you see pigs? You gotta pick one if you want to go this method. Although there are other methods later that don't involve any of these problems. I'll, I'll get to those. So how do you go about actually detecting when this nice old carrot thing on the sidebar goes up. Well, I'll show you. It's it's real simple. You're gonna want to make yourself a nice data pack. Just make one here called uh, right click detection. Put in your pack. Make sure the pack format is correct. If you don't know how to do any of this stuff, check out my data pack tutorial up in the top right. Okay, I've finished setting up my data pack following my own tutorial. Here I am in my load.mc function. It's always good form to just create your objectives in here. I'm adding the carrot scoreboard every time, just just cause. Over here in your tick.mc function or any kind of repeating command, we're gonna just use a simple execute command. Execute as at a, if score at s, so that's for every player, if this player's score, carrot, if their carrot score matches one dot dot, so that's one or higher. If you're not sure about all this execute stuff, I've got an execute tutorial. And then we're just gonna run, say, click. So this should, if they have clicked their carrot at least once, it should say click in the chat. So let's go in game. Now you can see our chat is absolutely filled with the word click. If I say something, it it's just gone. That's because we're never setting our carrot score back to zero. It's just staying above one at all times. So let's fix that. Here in our tick.mc function, we're actually going to break this caret thing out into its own function. So if they have more than one click, then we're going to call function, and I'll call it tutorial. We'll just call it caret. We'll go with one naming scheme here. Now, a fun thing you can do with the data pack helper plus extension in Visual Studio Code is you can hit control period to open up this little dialog box on a function you haven't created, and then just click create tutorial caret in the same data pack. And there it is, it's just been automatically generated for us. Now in here, this is where we are now going to say click. And then we are going to set our scoreboard back to zero. Scoreboard players reset at s caret. Now I'm using reset, not set zero. This is not a big deal. I just like this more. <laughs> it doesn't technically set it to zero. It sets it to nothing. So now if we go in game and reload after saving, you will see we say click once and then it stops. So let's test this out with our caret. Every time we click, 
can see it appears on the scoreboard for like 0.1 second. We're detecting right clicks. It's amazing. You can now run whatever code you want in our caret.mc function here. You could summon a sheep. Wee. Oh, actually you can't summon a sheep because we're missing an at at s. I've used data packs before. We had to set our position here with this. Now we can summon a sheep. Amazing. One of the most popular things for certain kinds of map making is to put the carrot or fungus in your offhand only when you're holding a certain item. So if you want to detect when you're holding, say, a diamond, just make it so whenever you select the diamond, the carrot on a stick magically appears in your offhand. And then you can just texture it so that there is absolutely nothing in your offhand and you just hide the slot. The commands for it pretty much just look like this. And again, you can copy and paste them from the description. Okay, that's enough of carrot and fungus on a stick type detection. Let's get into the more spicier stuff. Hey, you know, it just occurred to me that not everybody has this button bound to right click. Maybe I should call this a use item slash place block detection tutorial. You know what else not everyone has done? Subscribe to the Legitimus channel on youtube.com slash Legitimus. That's right, it's me. You're watching Legitimus. Please press gently the subscribe button with whichever button or key you have bound to main click. There are a couple of archaic methods that involve detecting right clicks on entities, such as a villager. There is a scoreboard statistic called minecraft.custom colon minecraft.talk to villager, and you can use this to detect whenever you open the trade menu of a villager. But wait, it gets better. Even if a villager like this doesn't have any trade, it will still count as talking to the villager in the sidebar over here. So we can actually detect whenever you talk to a villager. This is useful for when you don't want to be tied to a specific item like a carrot or fungus on a stick, uh, but rather tied to like a specific location. We summon a villager here that is no AI and silent with this command, command in the description. Uh, whenever we right click this guy, we'll be able to get our number up. Now we could put him, for example, inside a block that we want to detect right clicks on. Of course, you'd want to make this guy invisible, but I trust you know how to do that. The commands for this method are virtually identical to the commands for the carrot on a stick section. So just do that, but change out every instance of a carrot on a stick with talking to a villager and you've got yourself a working right click detection. Okay, what's next? There is a certain circumstance where the best kind of right click detection you can have is detecting when you give an item to an armor stand. So I'd like you to think to yourself, what advantages could this have over the other methods? The main one is that you can detect what item you right clicked with. So if I right click with a flower, I can now detect that this armor stand is holding a flower, which means obviously somebody right clicked on it. Now, a slightly more difficult question is who is that somebody? Now the answer is it's actually really pretty much impossible to find out with 100% certainty, as far as I'm aware. Uh, your best bet is just gonna be the nearest player, but if you're in multiplayer, this has a high chance of being jank. But if you want to detect when an armor stand is holding an item, this is the command for it. Execute as, at E, type equals armor stand, nbt equals hand items, and then an array here, where the first entry here as the ID of the item you want to detect, Minecraft poppy in this case. Then an empty thing for the, the other hand, and then at at s run whatever code you want to run when this happens. This is quite a big chunk of code to be writing off the top of your head, like I just did. <laughs> so I've put it down in the description for you to copy and paste and write whatever you want into it. And it's not my favorite, but it is popular. I've seen that there are other tutorials on YouTube that say, this is the way to do it. I disagree. What if I told you there was a method of detecting right clicks that was easier to set up than the carrot on a stick, several times faster, more precise, and more lag friendly. That's right, we're gonna talk about the black sheep of right click detection, ender eye detection. First off, why would you wanna detect the right click of an ender eye over right clicking of a carrot on the stick or a fungus on a stick? It is fast. Now, what does that even mean? Well, keep an eye on that scoreboard on the right side of the screen. If I hold down right click with a carrot on a stick, you can see it increases at a moderate pace, but if I wanted to detect whether or not I am holding down right click right now, that would be kind of a challenge. Now let's switch over to this eye of ender I've rigged up and hold down the right click button. That is increasing the number every single tick. 20 ticks per second, baby. <laughs> How do you set this up? 
there's not a scoreboard objective for detecting throwing an Eye of Ender. What you have to do is use an advancement. Good old reliable miso.github.io. Link in the description. All right, here we are. We're gonna just slap together a Ender Eye detection thingy. Under criteria, I'm gonna type in a name. Eye, doesn't really matter. Hit the plus button. Then I'm going to select my criteria. Down here, scroll to the bottom. Weirdly enough, it's not used Ender Eye. That is not gonna work for our purposes. No, no. You want using item. Add a condition and add an item to that condition. Then click the plus next to items and type in Minecraft underscore Ender Eye. All right, this is our advancement. This is going to activate whenever we right click with an eye of Ender. Now, in order to have this call a function, we have to add a reward, which right here, there is a spot called function. You can name your function anything you want. Just make sure it's the same in your data pack. Then we're gonna go over here, copy our function, go into ye old Visual Studio code, and maybe add a scoreboard for this. Scoreboard objectives add eye dummy, just in our load.mc function. Now, if you don't have an advancements folder in your namespace, you're gonna need to create one. So click on your namespace. Make sure functions is not selected, it's the namespace. And add a folder called advancements. Inside this create a folder, call it, I don't know, i.json. And paste in your advancement. Beautiful. We got some errors over here. Those are not real. Now we're gonna create our function called i.json mc function and in here is the code that's going to run whenever we right click so the first thing you have to do is reset the advancement because actually you can only get an advancement once so after you have received it you'll just have to reset it in this case with advancement revoke at s only tutorial i or whatever your function was called then we can do whatever code we want so in this case i'll say just scoreboard players add at s i one now in game, I'm gonna reload, set I to my sidebar, and hold down right click, and there we go. It's counting up. Every time we right click, it does that. You don't really have to bother with resetting the score here because you don't even need to track a score. You could just, <laughs> you could summon a sheep every time. There we go. This is true power. So now that I've taught you the perfect method of right click detection, let me just quickly tell you why this is pretty obviously not the perfect method of right-click detection. Um, it's an eye of ender. You throw it. It goes to the stronghold. It gets consumed when you right-click. This doesn't work in survival. It only works in worlds that don't have a stronghold. You will see that me right-clicking shows up in the chat. It, it works perfectly. It doesn't consume the item. It doesn't get thrown towards the stronghold. That's because there is no stronghold in this super flat world. If you ever want to use your data pack in a world that has a stronghold, if you're making something for normal survival, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, now you're a right-click detection god. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.